awesome. Enjoy. Time my It's good to be with you all. We're going to play some music. We're going to talk about music. And one of the things that I'm going to be excited to share with you today is what you're going to hear in a lot of this music where uh, I'm a composer, a, a performer, a bass clarinetist, and I use a lot of influences from Egypt. My father was Egyptian, and, uh, and over recent years, I've really dug into that, explored into that. So we're gonna go ahead and play some, and I just wanted to premise that so you, you when you're hearing certain things, you think, okay, now I, I see what's going on here. <laughs> time open for questions and have a dialogue. I don't want to just be talking at you. I want to hear what you guys are thinking and, and feeling. And so I wonder, any questions on what we just did? Yeah. I My, my dad immigrated in his mid-20s to the U.S. And I actually asked my dad, do you have some music? And he gave me some records that I started listening to. And that was a way that I started falling in love with what you hear, these scales us doing. These, in in uh, Middle Eastern music, they're called makams. We've got our quarter tone scales on the piano, right? In, in Middle Eastern music, you've got these qu uh, quarter tones in between the half steps. What are they? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we've got half steps on the piano, right? And, and our horns and everything. But in Middle Eastern music, you go quarter steps in between that. And so this was just like this whole world opened up. And I found that I loved it. And a lot of these pieces, and I'm gonna, we're gonna play one for you in a little bit, excuse me. Um, it's just like these epic journeys. And so I started trying to figure like, how can I make this work within our, our jazz setting? And it began a lot of exploration. And, and what you hear now, that's kind of culmination of that. A lot of years of trying stuff out, working this stuff together. You hear us doing, like in this piece, a lot of unison playing. Because in, in Middle Eastern music, you have a lot of unison, you won't have a lot of chords or, or, or harmony. Um, it's kind of different. It almost it almost kind of counteracts each other, and so that's where it was part of the exploration to figure out how to to make it work. So that's that's kind of how that all again long long answer to your question, but it was it's been a journey, and I think that for any of us when we're working on our craft, our instrument, our composing, all this stuff is a journey, right? I don't sound the same at, at this point in my life that I did 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And so that's one of the beauty of us as, as artists. We're always hopefully growing and listening and, and incorporating new things. So, yeah. Has anybody been to Egypt? Oh, man, we got a, Professor Wolf, we got to schedule a Peabody trip. <laughs> Talk to Gabriel. <laughs> Gabriel, is in the budget? Of course, everybody knows the pyramids. Right, uh, we've seen my dad on top of one of them, <laughs> not this one, but um, you know, for those that don't know, I mean, you saw the, the, the family photos and you can see the, the blocks and the steps, but originally it was all smooth. It was the, the blocks, the, the granite blocks I believe, and then I think it's limestone, the smooth, you can see at the top there. So you got the scale of the bus in there, right? To show you how, how big this is. <laughs> Egypt is this modern, uh, um, this modern country now, Cairo of 20 plus million people. So you've got this on the one hand, you think, okay, we're looking at the desert, there's the pyramids. But on the other side, you got the city. And for miles away, you can be driving through the city and you see there's somebody's house and right, and you got the pyramids peeking up over it. I was I was sharing with you that we um, had, I had an introduction to a, a great Egyptian musician. I want you to hear what this sounds like. Uh, it's always important to go back to the source. So check this out. Abdel Halim Hafez. Ooh. He was one of the titans. Like if there was a, a Mount Rushmore of music, 
you would have him, like in, the, in, in America, you have like James Brown, Elvis, or right, whoever. He and a few others were the, the superstars. And Egypt was kind of like along like the center, like the Hollywood of the Middle East, and so it had film and cinema. But just listen. <laughs> Introduction to the piece. You hear a lot of unison playing. Listen to what the percussion is doing. And here's Abdel Halim Hafez now here. It's like a dance, it's, it's love poetry. A lot of this is, is lyrical love songs. And now we come back to our original theme. That's four and a half minutes. There's seven minutes left. <laughs> so do you see do you see some of these things that I'm talking about? The way it's constructed. And you didn't hear chords thrown in there, right? So it, it creates to the, the this task of doing this in this setting. Like how do we merge this all and make it work? Um, and sometimes you throw a you throw a, a B7 in there, it's like, wait, this doesn't sound Middle Eastern anymore. And so it's a delicate thing. Questions on what we just what we just listened to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, uh... It's very like story driven, but like so. How does that incorporate when you're thinking of a new composition, like to bring it here? That's a great question, and I think that um, we have a lot of our traditional songs that are uh, a melody that are maybe 32 bars, or maybe we have an A A B A section. Um, this, you know, we have reoccurring themes, but maybe in some ways it's a little more like. Uh, a classical composition, kind of through composed sort of thing, with different themes and then interspersing and, and then adding ornamentations. And so what I'm finding these days is that I'll do less of sitting and writing just a straight melody. And I still do that. I, I love writing very lyrical pieces. But a lot of times, I'll come up with a fragment, an idea. And maybe it, it, I won't sit and like have two days that I write through a whole tune, but in the fragment, I write it down, another one, another one. And then sometimes I find myself stitching them together. And sometimes you have stuff that sits around for years. I'll keep the scraps of paper on, on the piano, and then I'll go and revisit them every now and then, see what I've got. Um, sometimes you get inspiration, like just hearing some other things by other people, and like, oh, I can throw that in there. And then suddenly I got these different ingredients, and I bake the cake. Mm -hmm. You know. So, um, but but you're right. I think that this approach. It's, it is very much storytelling. And that's one of the things I love about, about this music, about jazz, about classical music, about Middle Eastern music, is that I want to tell a story. I want to take it on an adventure. And um, within the composition, within our solos too, that's why like this rhythm section, when you, when you hear us taking solos, um, and we're doing our job as a soloist, we're taking you on a journey, but it's this rhythm section that's listening and like breaking stuff down and building up. I, I nickname Eric the wave machine, right? Because like, <laughs> if you're smart, he'll give you, he and the rest of the rhythm section, they, they'll put these waves and you surf it and it's just, and that, that's what like building up and, and what's it, uh, comp, uh, um, tension and release, right? Like we was talking about. Yeah. 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 Other questions, thoughts? I have come up within just the 12 note system. My, it, it's essentially a macam, but this first one here, that's kind of like what I would offer you as my Middle Eastern bebop scale. Jeff, can I get a, an E flat? <coughs> so I'm just gonna focus on 1A. Alright? That's that's the core of it. Now 
how we can do all kinds of uh, where we start and, and wh within the beat or what note. Uh, can you repeat it? I'm going to start on the fifth. Listen to this. been my my Rosetta song. How do you honor when you you're writing this music after you made your premium like this? How do you honor that maybe the fact that this music was written to express your belief or maybe a bigger message besides just like, hey, I wrote this song, like I just want to show people how do I honor the message of, of how some of the older music was written yeah, or what yeah. I've written? Uh, the, the older music, for example, incorporating it into your song. Well, I, th I, th I think that some of the lyrics, like I said, a lot of the stuff, like, played the sample, and there's a lot of kind of love poetry, and as, unfortunately, by me not speaking Arabic, I'm, I'm at a loss for, you know, some of the words and, and such, but, um, you know, I'm honoring it and, and cherishing it by deeply integrating it into the music that I've done, and like the same thing as, uh, you know, uh, I love Coltrane and have listened to and, and incorporated and, and studied, or Gary Parks, or, you know, and it's like, I'm respecting and paying tribute by loving that and, and integrating it to what I'm doing, hopefully having it, having me not sound like a clone, but at a certain point, having integrated it enough that it's organically now me, and you hear Todd Mockers. And I feel like that's the case with, with anything, like, Music, uh, film, literature, you know, any, any of the arts, architecture, right? And that's why I like the Eric was talking about, we study what came before us and um, we build on that. We're not, I mean, there, there are some people that are just like outliers that are just like their whole universe, like maybe like a CD wonder, but like, you know, even like that, the TV comes out of other things, right? And, and so um, we don't just happen in a vacuum.